Here's how to use my Venom Morph system and how to apply it to your own objects. First, the master controller controls growth overall. So you would animate this value to turn on growth. And you can set the level of subdivision which determines how detailed the displacement is. These round controllers control three different locations where the morph can start from. So to apply it to your own character, I would start by turning off subdivision so everything's faster. And then I'm just going to disable geometry nodes modifiers in morph object A and B so we just don't have any lagginess while we're copying stuff around. So also disable procedural tendrils and the fluid for now. So I'm, all, I'm just going to hide everything and show my character. It's an animated character. I'll parent it to the same armature. And uh, I have a cage mesh that envelops everything, which we'll use with the mesh to four modifier. And then I've got a venom mesh, and I've got a digi double of myself. Step one, let's turn on our um, layers up here. And I want to move my meshes into these morph object collections. Morph object A will be for the source. Morph object B will be for like the destination object. So anything in these collections will be read into the geometry node system dynamically. So grab the Steve Digi mesh and put it into morph object A, and then you would put your destination mesh into morph object B, and you can delete the original morph objects. And then I'm going to take these, I'm going to Alt D to duplicate them but instanced and then I'm going to put these into my morph meshes collection up top. This is where the meshes are actually animated and rendered. These meshes should not be animated but these meshes will get animation. It's important for this system to have a static mesh to start with. Now we now just select morph object A and then your start mesh. And then we're just going to do control L, copy link materials, and control L again, copy modifiers. And then do the same thing with morph object B and venom mesh. Control L, copy modifiers, and now we have those two set up. I'm not going to do it with the material because I want to keep my venom material. Now just delete the original morph object B and A. Those can go away. You'll have to reselect your armature. You should always have a rest pose or a zeroed out pose. For me it's on frame zero so my animation is just zeroed out. Nothing's happening. And this is the position the geometry node's growth will happen on. Just to make sure this is working, I'm going to move my controllers up to a better position. Like so. And then I'm going to hide my characters layer. And just enable the geometry nodes modifiers. Also, we need to hide our morph objects. And we're left with our morph. So if we go to master controller, try a growth value of something higher, and you'll see that it is indeed working. Now it looks terrible because we don't have the secret sauce added, which is the fluid and the tendrils. So going to fluid, enable that and it should just work and then um, with tendrils turn those back on and it appears that everything just works isn't that great so you might have to do a bit of copying and pasting but once you set it up everything is going to dynamically update and you'll be fine now 
if you were to go forward into the animation on this everything would fall apart that's because that we need a, to do a little extra setup for animation like I said it needs to be totally static for this growth effect to work but morph object A and B are currently still animated so just disable the armature in the source morph objects so those stay static and then if you go to another frame they are now still there but stuck there and that's where the mesh to form modifier comes in so let's do the fluid first I'm gonna save because this gets heavy um, and what we need to do is just add a mesh deform modifier and it needs to go above our remeshing because it gets even heavier down here um, turn on dynamic for everything that will allow the mesh to be animated and then we just want to grab our shell object from earlier select that and just click bind you have to bind the mesh deform on frame zero or whatever the rest frame is or just go into your armature and click rest position now if we go to frame 30 or something the mesh is now attached you'll see this sort of thing happening if your cage doesn't totally envelop your mesh so you would have to adjust those vertices of the cage to go outside let's do the same thing with our tendrils just go to the tendrils and all we must do is rinse and repeat mesh deform shell mesh make it dynamic and bind and just do that for all three of these these procedural tendrils are kind of hidden within a couple layers and one trick I like to do is if you select them and then hit period in, with your cursor in here it'll show them now if all went well we go to frame 30 and our tendrils are still attached in the end um, I did use I really should use the um, morph object B material here because it will fade between the fluid venom and whatever other material that you want to have then you just go to the master controller and animate this to your heart's content turn subdivisions up to get a more detailed displacement on your venom mesh it gets slower one thing to note if your fluid or your tendrils are changing vertex count at all this mesh deform modifier won't work and that's why it has to grow over a static mesh because if the mesh moves at all it'll change vertex count and break this mesh deform modifier if you made it all the way to the end thanks for watching and I hope this um, system comes in handy